Okay, I'm doing a part C on this PB13 because I wanted to and did not fully cover the Greek translation of the Hebrew. Now that's really important because see the Vulgate, this here is the Vulgate. It was originally developed in 200 AD and Jerome in 405 AD retranslated it. Now, the people who translated into Latin used the Greek and Jerome used the Hebrew. So this word conceptus needs to be proven right away what a lie it is. Okay? Because that's where you're getting these words conceived. They're coming from the Vulgate, as I said in the prior two increments. <coughs> but I need you to see for yourself live that that is so. So we're going to go through the Greek. Okay, you have to look in the lower window for this and unfortunately I don't know if I can get the Greek to always show. Yeah, BibleWorks 9 has a problem with Windows 7. This is the Greek text, okay, and the first word in it is Apolumi, which you can see in the lower left hand, lower right hand corner. Apolumi, it means destroyed. It is the equivalent of Abad here. This 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 word here in the Hebrew is translated by the word Apolumi, and this is where you get the word destroyer in your English Bibles. It's a, it's one of the, it's both this word Abad being translated by Apolumi. It's where we also get the word Apollo, the Greek fake god of light which is also it really means destroyer okay it is a nickname for Satan and a nickname for demons in particular Abaddon who comes out of the abyss and that's in Revelation 9 Apolumi means to destroy and it's famously recorded by Christ about how you you know don't be afraid of anybody who can hurt your body but who can destroy your soul okay destroy does not mean um, obliterate it means to ruin like if a bomb hits a building and all the stones fall down the building is uninhabitable it's destroyed but it still exists it's just in pieces okay so when it says destroy your soul it's not saying that the soul can be terminated it means that it's all in pieces okay so apolumi means to destroy alright and then here's the definite article, hey, hemera, that's the Greek word for day, very common word in the Bible. So, let be destroyed, it's the optative mood, which is the same thing as the Joseph. Let be destroyed, the day, n means in, this is the uh, which, female, data feminine singular of hos and then this is ganao ganao means to sire it's talking about birth sire means that the man has sex with his wife and a baby comes from it out of the womb it's not considered sired until it's born and the word genesis comes from this word ganao you're not considered a sire until the birth occurs. This was the big problem that Henry VIII had, is he couldn't get born, he could not sire a son. Okay? So genao means born. And as you'll see in the lower lower window there, that's genao. Alright? And kai the night, nux, means night in, in Greek. And you can see that all in the lower window. Those are the lexicons. They, I didn't write them. Alright? In which it was said. That's from Lego. To Arist. Arist has the idea of a point in time, whether it's past, present, or future, at which a thing occurs. Okay? In which it was said. And here's our keyword, idu, look, 
Christ uses that word a lot in the Gospels. Our sin. A boy. Male. Literally. Alright, there's no word conceit there, is there? Look. A boy. Well, unless it's born, you don't know it's a boy. In fact, if you talk to an ob they'll tell you that you don't know the gender of even something in, in the, of a fetus in the womb for a while. Because gender is not the first thing that forms. Alright? So, conception wouldn't have a gender associated even with it. I'm sorry. Let me talk more quietly. Conception. The moment of conception has no gender. So the word conceived is totally wrong. Now, the thing that's so important about this is when you get down here to the Vulgate. The Vulgate was a translation from the Greek. All right, It was Jerome who went back to the Hebrew. And if you look at, if you go to advent.org, and you read the letters between Augustine and Jerome at the time that Jerome was there in um, the Sinai using the Hebrew manuscripts to fix the Vulgate. Augustine was mad at him. It's around The letters are around 405 B, uh, AD. Augustine was mad at Jerome for using the Hebrew because he's saying, look, we got our Latin. If you, if you sit there and you go back to the Hebrew, then you're going to create a problem for me because when I'm arguing with the Jews. Okay, well, but Augustine was not a good disciple or a student of the Greek, only the Latin. But the Vulgate had originally been done using the Greek. Okay, well, there's no word for conceive here. Look, a male. You would only know that at birth. And the gender, even today, in modern science, we know. The gender is not known at conception. You don't even know what the moment of conception is. It has to even be estimated today. And you don't know the gender then. So it doesn't, there's no, it's not medically possible to know that a boy is conceived. Period. Okay? Period. And the text on which the Vulgate is based doesn't say conceptus. This is a clear invention. It's just an invention. Alright? Flat invention. Because the Greek text doesn't say conceived. It says, Behold, ye do, arsen, a male, which you'd only know at birth. Okay? That's the only way you know. Now, in case you say, well, brain out, that's your interpretation. No. See this? Right down here? This is called the LX, the, the Brenton translation of the, of the Greek Old Testament. It's done by Sir Lancelot Brenton. See, right here. Sir Lancelot Brenton. In 1844, 1851, and he kept on doing it. Okay, so now let's look at his translation of what I just told you. Let the day perish in which I was born, and the night in which they said, Behold, that's his do right here. So he's translating it rightly. A man-child. Well, instead of saying male, he's saying man-child, because he's being poetic. So you see, what I just told you, and I was just reading the Greek word for word, showing it to you with the lexicons, that's exactly what in 1844 was the translation. So what happened with the Volga here? They created a word that isn't in either the Hebrew or the Greek. I'm sorry, I shouldn't yell. They created a word which did not exist in either the Hebrew or the Greek. You're seeing live on screen in front of you the text that God commissioned be written. The Vulgate is adding a word that is not there. 
And the only reason these other guys are saying conceived is because they're looking at the Latin because it's not there in the Greek. Behold, a male. That's the Greek. That's the words. Behold, idu, look. Arsen, male. Now, since I've shown you now what the what the LXX translation is by Sir Laura Lancelot Brenton in 1844. Now I can cover that up, and I can cover up the Latin too. And we're just gonna go here. All right. Whoops. Come down a little. All right. Look. Apolumi, perish, destroy, may it be, optative update, mood. May it be the de destroyed, may it be destroyed the day in which I was sired. The siring means born. That's why it's usually translated born in your English Bibles. It's not a siring until it finishes, and it doesn't finish until you're born. Kai and the night in which it was said, or the night which said, that's what they're really using the active here, as if night could talk. Behold! Here, see? Behold. Look. A male. Now, there isn't one teacher on this planet who can read the Greek, who could dispute this. Not one. They have to lie to dispute it because these words were written in 273 BC and even the King James translators knew that and they talk about the fact that the Septuagint was written in 273 BC they used the name of the guy who was in power then in Egypt and you'll find that in the 1611 KJV preface which you can just Google to find it and read it yourself okay Behold, a male. So there's nothing about conception there. It's obviously a birth because you cannot know it's male until it's born. And at conception, there's no gender. You can talk to any ob even today. At conception, there's no gender question yet. The gender develops later. And nobody knows the moment of conception. So it would never be a knight saying a boy is conceived. Never. Because the gender is not at the moment of conception. Alright? Now in front of your face, therefore, what you have is proof that all these translations using the word conceived are basing themselves on a lie word that the Vulgate inserted. Which we can prove it's a lie word because the Greek doesn't use the word conception. And hara, giver, means born. Because it follows born over here. See? When I was born. Perish the day when I was born. That's inside. And the night that said, born, a male. And this, this is like mighty man. He, you know, they're hoping that that's what he'll turn into. And the Greek exactly follows the Hebrew. Because it was Jews who made the translation. Perish the day in which I was sired, I was born, and the night in which 
It was sad. Behold, a male. It cannot mean conception by any stretch of the imagination. Now, therefore the NAU is lying when it uses the word conceived. Therefore, the KGV is lying when it uses the word conceived. NIV, lying when it uses the word conceived. LXX is correct. That's exactly, it's translating word for word, I showed you that. Latin is why they're getting the word conceived. And so they managed to justify their lie by saying, well, you see, the Vulgate is older. Maybe it had the meaning of conceived. Even though the word conceived is nowhere in the verse because there is no such word for conceived in the Hebrew or the Greek. There's no such word for conceived. At all. And behold a man child. It's another version of the LXX. Okay? So when it says conceived, conceived, they're looking at the Latin. And they're ignoring the actual words that God commissioned be wrote, written. It's just flat lie. It cannot be anything else. Same thing for the GNV. Now you can argue and sort of justify the King James doing it because they're looking at the Latin. I mean, the King James Bible is deliberately designed to be a compromised translation that would be acceptable to both Catholics and Protestants. So if it's going to be acceptable to the Catholics, they're going to have to. Or they're going to justify themselves and claim they have to. Use the Latin. But this is the only place conceived occurs. is in the Latin translation. Sorry. I don't want to yell. But the ones that actually look at the real Hebrew. Like J.P.S. Tanakh. 1917. NAB, in this verse, NAB is often a bad translation, but at least here it's okay. Child is a boy. Yeah. I mean, they don't have the word the child in there. It's just, look, a boy. All right. No conceived, no conceived. These are all liars. Okay. A boy is born. The NIB, this is the British version of the NIV, is right. But the NIV is produced, produced in the United States where all the lying pro-lifers were politicking at the time because the NIV came out in the 1970s. So they say conceived because they can't sell their Bibles if they don't give a political, po politically acceptable translation, never mind what the truth is. All right, But the NIV, the British version, right here. Sorry, these aren't in proper order. Right here. See, the NIB is the British version. And it's coming out even later, but it's British. They don't have the same kind of hang-ups that we do. So they don't have any problem translating it rightly. Boy born. Okay? Boy born. This is the NIRV. The New International Reader's Version, which usually has bad translations, but this time they got it right. New Jerusalem, of course, is a Catholic Bible, and they're going to follow the Latin, so they say conceit. Okay? NLT is so bad, I don't even want to talk about them. New Revised Standard Version is following the Latin. Again, following the Latin. Following the Latin. Politically correct. It's amazing to me that Tanakh would do that. Following the Latin. Because it's not in the Greek and it's not in the Hebrew. So the Tanakh, this particular Tanakh came out in 1985. You can see why they would do that. Roe versus Wade had come out then. Okay. Web Bible. 
following the Latin. YLT, following the Latin, not the Hebrew. Young's literal translation tends to be really bad anyway. La following the Latin. Okay? L.E.E. Isaac Leeser, Jewish Bible. He's following the Latin because there's no conception there. The N.O.Y. I haven't even heard of this one. No, George Noyes Bible. Following the Latin. Rotherman. It's better. Lo. Yeah, that's like Idu. A man child. Yeah. See? Idu. This isn't in the Hebrew either. Okay, the Hebrew doesn't have a word like that that said born, man, child. Really, you know, a man. Born, a male. So when he's doing Rotterdam, see, this is how you can prove what, by what they're really using to make their translation. They're not necessarily using the Hebrew. Okay? Because this is saying low. Okay, but that's not in the Hebrew. That's only in the Greek, though. Man-child, yeah, okay, poetic version of it. And that is right here in the Greek and also in the Hebrew. So that translation I just showed you, the Rotham, Rotterdam, whatever it is, R-O-T, it's using partly the Greek to insert it into the Hebrew where it doesn't exist. And, uh, you know, you can argue that's right or wrong to do. A male. Okay. At conception, you don't have gender. At conception, you don't know gender. Only at birth do you know gender. Because you can't see the body parts until they're outside the womb. Remember, we're not talking about ultrasound. Now, that's the Greek. It's pretty clear. Where conceived is coming from, it's a lie invented in the Vulgate. And then all these translators, as we just saw, they either use partly the Greek, partly the Hebrew. Okay, but there's no word for conceived in Greek or Hebrew. The only place the word conceptus, conceptus, exists is here in the Latin. So now you have exposed where these translations are coming from and that they're being politically correct in order to sell their Bibles. Now I don't know about you but I want to learn what the Word of God says. I don't care about politics and I shouldn't care about politics because Christ said don't care about politics John 1836 I have to vote so I have to learn about it okay but my kingdom is not of this world, and my life is not belonging to anybody but Him. Now, if you care about God, then you care about what His Word actually says. And you go learn what that Word actually says. And you got things like Bible works that will show you what it actually says, without politics. Now, yeah, Bible Works costs three hundred and fifty dollars, and it'll take you at least sixty days to figure out how to configure it. Because what you're seeing in front of you is I, I did extensive modifications to it, and you can do your own. But if you care about God, you care about His Word. If you care about His Word, you want to learn His Word. And if you do not have the three hundred and fifty dollars, ask Him for it. Watch, He will make it appear. And if you don't do that, then you're just like the pro-lifers who want to live on your emotions instead of the Word of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Thank you, Dad. You will live on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not from the mouth of politicians, not from the mouth of translators, but from the mouth of God. And the only reason that we even use the translation of the Greek from the Old Testament is because Christ and all the apostles and all the Bible writers are quoting from it so extensively. So they treated it as accurate. Now not all parts of what we call the Greek Old Testament are parts that they had. In other words, afterwards there were a lot of uh, bogus Greek words stuck into the Greek Old Testament. 
that they never used because they were bogus then or they didn't even exist then. But we can tell what did exist then from the quotes that are used. Okay? And if you don't know this stuff in front of you, you're not going to understand even your salvation because Christ said you must be born again. Again. I mean, you had to be born the first time, and now you have to be born the second time. Not conceived. And honey, if you don't understand that life begins at birth, you're spitting on the whole Bible. And if you don't believe me, find out from God yourself. Use 1 John 1, 9 and ask Him. All I can do is show it and say what the truth is, the best of my understanding. And God will witness to what I say being true or false. So ask Him. Use 1 John 1, 9 and ask Him yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be subject to sin unto death. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of your friends and neighbors between now and 2041. The Matthew 24 videos cover that starting at the 42nd video. Peace out.